And uh, how many of you glad to be saved tonight? Say amen. Good to be in the house of God. And we're glad each one of you is here tonight at the Capitol Connection. And this time last year, we were in the same place doing the same thing. We were the last ministry officially to go up on Capitol Hill. And our last day, the hill closed down the next day. I was praying it would open up yesterday and we'd be the first ones back in. But it didn't work like that, and uh, we'll see how things work. I'm sure we'll get back for the glory of God. I want to thank Pastor Creed for allowing me to come, and uh, the wonderful staff of Awake America, the great job they do. Uh, aren't all these, uh, all these graphics and all the things they put up are wonderful, and uh, I think we ought to give them a good hand for all the work they put into this, and just incredible amounts of time and energy and resource to go into a meeting like this. Two of the three men that have encouraged me the most during the pandemic, in the toughest days that I had, decision making, what to do, how to go about this, what, how to treat it, uh, what, how, to, how to absorb all this. Uh, the two of the three of those men, one was Pastor Creed, my good friend, the other is Dr. Gibbs, and another of those men was also in one of the videos. And uh, what a blessing to hear from those men and to be all here together, clothed and in our right minds. Amen. Turn in your Bibles, please, the book of Second John. Second John. I'll need to speak rapidly tonight, so I will speak 40 miles an hour with gusts up to 90. So turn to Second John, verse number one. Second John, verse number one. I heard about a man was driving up the road, and uh, man, he was minding his own business, and he looked on the side of the road, and there was a sign, and it said, Talking Dog for Sale. Well, he pulled in the driveway. He thought, I've got to check this out. Knocked on the door. Man came to the door and said, What is it, sir? He said, You have a talking dog for sale? He said, I do. He said, Where is he? He's in the backyard. And he said, All right. He said, You'll find him. He went in the backyard, and there was a little Labrador retriever just sitting there. He looked at the dog. He's looking around like this. The dog looks up and said, What's up, bud? You looking at me? He said, Are you the talking dog? He said, I sure am. Been talking all my life, ever since I was a puppy, way back when. He said, I served in the military. My first tour of duty was over there at Operation Desert Storm. He said, I came back. I got a silver star and came back from combat. Then they sent me over to Operation Iraqi Freedom, and I went over and served in the military again. He said, I've been all over the world serving. He said, I've got several pups, and they're, and they're active duty. They're serving all over the world as well. And he said, it's been a great life. He said, but I've been retired now. They send me to the airport. And I, I sniff a few pieces of luggage for bombs, a few other things, but most of the time I stay back here. Man, the fellow went to the front door. He said, how much do you want for that dog? He said, $5. He said, $5? He said, that's right, $5. For a talking dogs? He said, yes, sir. He said, he's a great talker, but he's the biggest liar on the planet. He's never been out of the backyard. Anyway, uh, some of you get that later. But anyway, never been out of the yard. Well, how many believe that dog should have told the truth? Amen. And we're going to learn tonight a little bit about for the truth's sake. For the truth's sake, stand together for the reading of the Word of God. 2 John, verse number 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the what? Truth. And not I only, but also all they that have known the what? Truth. Truth. For the what? Truth. Truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace. From God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in what? Truth, Truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in what? Truth. As we have received a commandment from the Father. I want us to look briefly at verse 2. He said, also all they that have known the truth. And here's why he was writing. This is what he lived for. This is what drove the apostle's life. In the latter part of his life, he lived his life for the truth's sake. I want to speak on that subject for a few moments tonight. Father, help us tonight 
And may we truly hear from thee. Thank you for what you will do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said together. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing for so long. If I could get one of those handhelds, that would be a blessing. And, and, uh, and uh, we find this man of God. Thank you, Brother Fox. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, we find this man of God who's on. He identifies himself in, the, in this epistle as the elder. He is saying that he was not only a pastor and an elder of the church, he's also identifying himself in the latter years of his life. Most Bible scholars believe that John was somewhere between 90 to 95 years of age, and he was one of the only apostles to actually die a natural death. He was the one that God used on the incredible island of Patmos, there in that southwest corner of Turkey. And while there on the Isle of Patmos, I've been there, and my wife and I have actually seen that incredible spot. While on Patmos, he received the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. We find this man, John, and his great passion was known as the love apostle. He wrote much about this wonderful commodity called love. How many believe as Baptists we could use a bit of that? Do I have an amen? Uh, for the Bible says that herein shall all men know uh, by the year of my disciples, if you have love one to another, in John 13, 35. But he is also the apostle that spoke much about truth. We learned last night so wonderfully and eloquently about the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of lying and falsehood that is so rampant in our generation today. I wrote down a few things about truth. I won't preach those. But I believe that Isaiah 59 was so accurate when God said, Truth is fallen. God said in Isaiah 59, 14, Judgment is turned away backward. Justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. The picture there was an ancient pillar that had been toppled over and cast aside, no longer for one to see what was written upon it. Truth is fallen. The writer also mentioned that truth was forsaken. And we find Jeremiah, in chapter 9, verse 3, that there was a generation of people that are not valiant for the truth. And he said, uh, upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil. God made it very clear there'd be a generation of people who, where if truth would fall, truth would be forsaken. And it's so important because truth in your life is foundational. You and I cannot serve Him and glorify Him and live for Him unless you and I walk and live and abide in the truth of God. We find the foundational truths that we know are found throughout Scripture. In fact, 1 Timothy 3.16, the apostle said, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the pillar and ground, which is the pillar and ground of the, of the truth. And so God wants us to learn about what truth is for our life. Now, the humanist, the humanist says the truth revolves around himself. Truth is relative. Whatever he makes it, that is what truth is going to be. I'm reminded of Romans 1.25, where the Bible said, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Have we not made man the center of the universe in this generation instead of a living God himself? And have we not said the truth is relative and whatever we make it, that's the truth for us? But if you study the Bible, the Biblicist says the truth is not relative, but rather truth is revealed. And we are not pragmatic about truth. We are dogmatic. We say the truth is always the same. God is always the same. Right is always right. Evil is always evil. I love the Word of God where God Himself is at the center. Now, truth has been revealed to us. All you have to do is look at creation. At Genesis 1-1, the Bible says, In the beginning, help me out, God 
created the heaven and the earth. There is no doubt that God made everything there is. And in the beginning, God spoke, and it was done, and God made this world. Truth has also uh, been revealed through inspiration. So we have this wonderful Bible that God has given to us where the Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be truly furnished, uh, perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So well, we find the truth has been revealed through creation, through inspiration. But tonight I want us to be reminded of the fact that truth has been revealed through incarnation. The Lord Jesus Christ, when He came into this world, the Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. Christ was the embodiment of truth from the Godhead Himself. In John 1, 17, He said, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now we know that there are three pillars of society. There are three foundations upon which every society rests. Of course, there are politics or government. And of course, there is economy, which is very, very important. But above all else, there's our faith in God and our belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God Himself. Do you know that in Revelation chapter 13, there will be a day when the devil will incarnate, will control all three phases of society. He will control the economy. He will control the, the uh, politics. He will control religion. He will control even the military. And all men will have to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead. We're not very far away from mandatory uh, marking and all that goes along with it and a mandatory chip. Do I have an amen? I believe Jesus is about to come. He may come back tonight. He may come back before I finish this message. And by the way, if you're still here, the notes are right here. You can preach. We won't need them. Our faith will be sight. Amen. We'll see Jesus in all of his glory. In 2006, there was a documentary. This documentary, somehow or another, received a, I believe it was a Grammy Award. I don't know which one it is for films. Grammy or Emmy, it got a reward, an award, and this film was called An Inconvenient Truth. It was put out by our former Vice President Al Gore, and it talked about the fact that the world is warming up. They called it global warming. He said that in one decade, there'd be no more snow in Kilimanjaro, on Mount Kilimanjaro. He said the ice on the, on the North Pole would be gone by 2000. 14. Well, the last I've checked, there's still more there. He said there'd be fish swimming down the main streets of Miami. I'm going to report, we were there last week. We went to Coconut Grove for a few days, went right down Miami, and sure enough, uh, we drove, and the, the man at the teller upgraded me. He said, are you some kind of a pastor? I said, I sure am. He said, let me be a blessing. I said, all right, and he gave us a convertible Mustang, amen? You should have seen our convertible Mustang with all of our luggage sticking out of the back seat. We looked like the Baltimore hillbillies, amen? But I mean, uh, driving down the road, I realized that there was terra firma under those wheels, no fish swimming down down the road, too many, I guess too many cold snaps. And you understand the fact that we're living in a generation of deception and lying and falsehood. Rather than admit their error of global warming, we now have a new coin, a new phrase, climate change. Climate change is the, the absolute, it's the catch-all for globalism, for humanism, for a one-world system that is coming to being just like God said that it would, but all the while, the truth of God remains sure, steadfast, and steady. The Lord God's Word abideth forever. Amen? John writes to this elect lady, for the truth's sake, and he says to them, I want you to walk in the truth. I want you to worship God in the truth. We know that he said that God is a spirit, and they that worship him 
must worship in spirit and in truth. He wants our work to be based and built upon the truth of the Word of God. He wants our life, even our warfare, our loins to be girt about with truth. And we must be willing to live our life. And yes, even as God's people to give our life for this wonderful thought of the truth's sake. July 4th of this past year, our nation turned 244 years old. The Roman Empire lasted over 2,000 years. America is a young nation. Amen? And we celebrated the fact that on July 4th of 1776, 56 men, brave men, signed their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. I believe they gave that for the truth's sake. You know who they were. But just for review, think about the price that they paid. The five of the signers were captured by the British as traitors and tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons serving in the Revolutionary Army. Another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardships of the Revolutionary War. And my list goes on of who they were. 24 were lawyers and judges. 11 were merchants. Nine were farmers and large plantation owners. But they signed a document knowing that they would probably lose, lose everything they had. Why? Because they believed in a declaration. They believed in a new nation. They believed that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. They believed that they were willing to give their lives, their lives, for the truth's sake. Standing tall, straight, and unwavering, they pledged for the support of this declaration with firm reliance on the protection of the divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. I'm glad that some people lived for the truth's sake. And may I encourage you, stand on the Word of God. Amen. Live and walk and speak the Word of God. And give the Word of God out to a lost and dying world, as we've heard so wonderfully tonight, for the truth's sake, to glorify Him. Let's bow our heads, please, and our hearts together for prayer.